So Mark, did you see that advertisement that MGM Grand is advertising itself as Ellis Island, the big dog uh, taking out the little competition? Is this out of bounds or good business? I mean, it's, it seems so dirty, but it's got to be like an, an error with Google or something, I imagine. I don't know that they would allow this to go. And if I was Ellis Island, I'd be pretty pissed off. Even if it was an error, I'd be pretty pissed off. But the fact that this went out there and was there for people to see is kind of weird and you know, they're talking about Ellis Island, but the link is MGM. I don't, I don't know. That's a, I don't know how you mess that up. Or it's just dirty business practices, right? Targeting other people. I did check right before the show and it does not appear that that ad is showing up anymore. Don't destroy the little ones. Yeah, let, let's, uh, we all love Ellis Island. Let's uh, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, this week, Buffalo Bills reopened in Prim, and there was a lot of changes out there. I went out and filmed it, and on the channel, we already have the full tour video of Buffalo Bills. I talked to the marketing director out there, got a lot of great information about the rides, what's going on with the hotel, their plans for the casino. So check out the tour. You'll see exactly what it looks like right now, plus everything that's going on. And also Prim Valley, the other hotel across the street and owned by the same owners, kind of uh, seeing a sad day with Buffalo Bills reopening. They gutted half the casino floor. They closed the hotel there. So clearly they're putting all their resources into Buffalo Bills, moving a lot of the machines over there. The mall is now completely cut off from the casino. I'll have a video on that coming next week uh, with a full tour of that. But a lot of changes. Good to see another casino open though, Mark, even if it means the other one is kind of not doing so well. I mean, it's what we've seen with Station and others, you know, focusing on what whichever one does best and moving stuff over. So... I can understand that you're not getting enough gamblers for two and probably can't staff it very well. So it makes a lot of sense, you know, and there's not a ton left in the mall, right? Did you walk through it at all? Was there, was there anything still open? Yeah. The mall is super depressing. The first time I walked the mall uh, in a while was in 2020. And, you know, I liked all the art that they had put up on the walls and trying to make it seem a little bit nicer. But now that art feels depressing, just knowing how sad this thing is, seeing it completely cut off from the casino. There are four stores left. There's a Levi Outlets, a Michael Kors store, a thrift shop, and uh, one other store, Bath and Body Works, I think. Plus, there's some kiosks that are set up in the walkway. Can't imagine those people are paying too much in rent. Uh, but with the mall completely cut off from the casino, I'm wondering if its uh, days are very, very numbered because it's got to be really expensive to keep that thing open with, with heating and air conditioning and everything else for a massive mall with four stores. Yeah, that's a widespread of options thrift store all the way up to like michael kors <laughs> you know you're getting both ends of the spectrum there and i i don't know if enough people are coming in for high-end shopping maybe a lot of locals go in there i don't know but it, it does seem strange i know there's a a uh, mall that's by where my wife grew up and they basically rent it out to like office buildings businesses and stuff too like everything one by one went out and now people just go in there to walk around but it's all like staffed with cubicles and stuff. So maybe that's the future. I just don't think there's anybody that wants to be out there. It's so far from True. everything. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. But look forward to the video on Prim Valley next week. I walk through the entire property and I'll show it to you. And don't forget to check out the Buffalo Bills video, which is already on the channel. Tons of stuff and really exciting because the property looks better than it has in a very long time. So I want to reiterate that that was good news. What's not good news is that Resorts World in the most unpredictable move ever has done away with free self-parking, at least uh, for the most part. So $10 will be the cost to park there unless you join Genting Rewards. So I kind of get this. I mean, this has been a thing casinos have done for a long time. Many casinos here, for instance, had different prices for buffets if you were a Players Club member or not. And they're allowing you to join for free to get free parking. So do you think this is bad or a stupid move on their part maybe? I mean, I don't think it's that bad. When I originally saw it, I was like, oh, come on, Resorts World. You you know, you need every little thing and feather in your cap you can have. But the fact that they're giving it to free for, you know, it's not even like high tier players, but anybody with a player's card. And they do that here in Detroit. Like if you go on a game day, they'll charge you 20 bucks. But if you show them your player's card, you get them free. So I don't have a problem with that. You know, the big pain is if you lose that, if they make you pay on the way in. Most places in Vegas make you pay on the way out, so you can go in and get one and print it off, swipe it. So I don't think it's a bad move, and it, it makes a lot of sense because people are probably using their parking and going other places and not gambling. So you want to get some money out of those people. All you got to do is get a player's card. I know some don't want to give up their personal information, but hey, you're in Vegas. That's all you do. Yeah, this is just an acknowledgement by the casino. Hey, we want you to come here and gamble uh, and at least uh, get into our ecosystem and 
We're going to give you free parking for that. Of course, most of the casinos around there do also have pre parking. So this is a, a little bit of a gamble on their part, but I don't think the barrier of entry is too high in getting a card. So I don't see this as a huge move. We kind of knew that something was going to come because from day one, those parking garages had, you know, ticket in, ticket out machines. They had paid parking gates and everything else. So we knew this was always part of the plan. And I feel like this is the least bad version of it. Yeah, I'm not going to give them a lot of hate for this. We'll see how it works out. And if it sort of makes people go to Venetian, win other places, Circus Circus <laughs> instead. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I do wonder, like, were people parking and going, I mean, when's free? So what, where were they going, though, that were parking there? I guess for events and stuff like the Christmas thing they had out front, maybe that and, and some concerts. But other than that, I you know, 10 bucks isn't even that bad. I feel like that's still one of the cheapest, if not cheapest, in Vegas. You know, it's not like it's 25, 30 bucks. So all in all, I don't think it's so big of a deal. They made a big deal on Twitter, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Now, $10 isn't bad, but $5 million is a lot. And that's what Caesars is selling a Formula One package for. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, a word from our sponsor, ExpressVPN. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Did you know that when surfing the internet, your information is wide open for nosy people, including your ISP to see, even if you're using a browser's private or incognito mode? ISPs are also legally allowed to sell your information to advertisers. ExpressVPN encrypts and reroutes your traffic through their network of servers around the globe, giving you secure access to the internet. It also helps you get around geographic content restrictions. I just used ExpressVPN to watch the original Knives Out movie on Netflix after watching Glass Onion. It isn't available in the US, but I was able to change my online location and watch it. ExpressVPN can also unlock cheaper subscriptions by allowing you to sign up from a different country. As someone who travels a lot, privacy and security are important. I'm constantly connecting to strange Wi-Fi networks and use ExpressVPN to keep my information private from lurkers while also keeping a secure connection to the sites and services I need in countries with heavy censorship. Find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash miles to memories or clicking the link in the description below. All right, Mark, a few months ago, Wynn released details of a $1 million package for Formula One and uh, included a lot of cool stuff. And I guess Caesars doesn't want to be outdone because they've added the Nobu Emperor package, $5 million. They were like, <sighs> hold my beer. Hold my beer, Wynn. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying it out loud just makes me <laughs> shiver. And then you look, if you scroll down, they they have other villa offers for a million. And the only difference really is you get the rooftop thing at the Nobu Tower. And then you have the chef, uh, Chef Nobu, come in and cook for you in the place, which is cool. But I don't know if that's, f you know, $4 million more cool. You get 12 tickets instead of six to the, the special lounge. But uh, I don't know, man. That's a, That's a huge price increase from not giving you a whole lot more bang for your buck, I don't think. Yeah, they were probably going for the headline here. Uh, yeah, so what they say is uh, promising the most curated experience during the inaugural race weekend. This impressive package includes the most luxe collection of amenities along with five nights accommodations in the award-winning Nobu Sky Villa inside Nobu Hotel. I think it's a little over 10,000 square feet. You also get two tickets to Adele. You get instant seven-star status. I would hope so, given that amount of spend. A VIP host, spa services for six in the villas, Private treatment room. That sounds fun. That's worth at least a million dollars right there, Mark. So I, I don't know. What Deshaun Watson's about. buying it right now. <laughs> <laughs> you get a personal driver and then 12 tickets to the paddock club, like you say, with the food and drink access. And as, as you said, the other villas, there's several other villa options starting at $1 million. I'd just rather pay a million dollars to go to win. I don't, I, I don't know if I had the million dollars to spend. That's probably where I would go. You know, and if I'm paying all this money for this rooftop and cool area, I'd probably want to just watch the race from up there instead of going to the club. And let's be honest, the picture of that, I know it's like a, a you know, short term thing that they're putting together for this event, but it looks like any other airport lounge I've ever seen. It doesn't look all that impressive for millionaires. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be better when it's all said and done. But yeah, somebody will buy it just to be, you know, for the brag, I guess, maybe. I don't know. This This is so Vegas. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Let us know in the comments what you think is the, the best package. Is there any scenario where that is worth $5 million just to just to sort of hang out for a weekend and watch a race? We'll, we'll see. Now, uh, Eater also covered the saddest restaurant closures of 2022. And my takeaway from their list is that there wasn't a ton of restaurant closures in 2022. Not a lot of high profile ones like we saw in 2020 and 2021. 
The big ones would be Moon Palace and Major Domo at Venetian, which are David Chang's restaurants. Moon Palace, I don't know if you ever had that, Mark. That was like a, a slider fast food restaurant, which had like really high end, I guess, Korean sliders with uh, fresh made potato chips. I never got to eat there. It looked really good. And a Major Domo, more of a sit down place, uh, meat and seafood stuff like that. Those both closed pretty abruptly. And then the rest of the closures that this article talked about, more local stuff, off-strip stuff. So none of the really big restaurants uh, closed, I guess, in 2022. I don't follow that all that closely. Yeah, I was, you know, I couldn't really think of anything on the list that stuck out to me and I hadn't eaten at any of them. So I didn't shed any tears, luckily. But yeah, it's surprising that a slider place would go. But since both restaurants went at the same time, maybe one brought the other one down or something along those lines, you know, financial issues outside of the, the specific restaurant. Because you wouldn't think sliders and chips, even if they are pricey, you think that'd be kind of a go-to for Vegas. But I don't know. You never know these days. You don't. We'll put a link down there so you find what restaurants the eater staff thought was sad. There's a really interesting vegetarian restaurant, a few other ones, but nothing else that was high profile as, as those ones on the list. And Mark, it seems like every show now we're talking about a new casino robbery. And I don't want to spend too much time on this, but robbery number six in like the last six weeks just happened. Uh, we talked about the Silverton on our last show, and now it's the Rampart Casino over at the JW Marriott. That's in Summerlin. Got hit on Christmas Eve. They don't know if it's related to the other robberies. They're still investigating. As usual, the news coverage is about three sentences, so we don't know a lot about what happened. But I think it's worth mentioning because this is the sixth one. And yeah, I mean, we don't probably have anything new to say about it, but it's uh, it's crazy to see. It's got to be the guy in the mask and the black latex gloves, don't you think? Like, <laughs> there's too many of them happening yeah, not for it to be the same. I don't know. Yeah. And, and I am I know it's easier to get into and out of a locals casino, but I almost feel, you know, more bad about it all when it's local casinos. Like, go hit some of the big boys. Go hit an MGM. Stuff like that. But getting in and out of the strip would probably be horrible. But it seems like they don't stop you anyway. So, uh, who knows? Yeah, we're not advocating robbing they, anyone, just to be clear. The, the gon- they could ride the gondolas. That would be the getaway vehicle. There you go. Let's put there them you in. Go. He got away in the gondola <laughs> down the strip. We, we have it all figured out. So over at Paris, Meatloaf, that musical is closing after just three months. Paris has really struggled over the years to get shows to stick around. They've had a ton of like Broadway style shows, which if people don't know out there, when they bring Broadway style shows to Vegas, they tend to shorten them to about 80 minutes or so. Um, and that's what I always heard back in the day. And I remember when they started bringing shows like Lion King and Phantom of the Opera, all these other shows was because the casinos wanted people out gambling, but also people have a shorter attention span in Vegas compared to like going to Broadway when you're going to the theater and everything else. So these shows tend to get cut down and that hurts them a little bit. And the, the Meatloaf show closing after just three months. And uh, Meatloaf didn't really have anything to do with it. I think he passed away last year, didn't he? But yeah, yeah, another kind of unsuccessful show launch for Paris. I wonder if they're going to try to figure out something that's not Broadway for that theater. Yeah, surprising it only made it 12 weeks. Like you'd think it, these cost so much to get up and running and they usually have to go for years to make their money back. And they must have spent all their money getting it ready and, and didn't have anything to, to kind of go with the flow. I mean, they open up 12 weeks, you're hitting kind of a little bit of busy time and then a, a big chunk of that 12 weeks is slower time into December. So it wasn't even like the best timed launch. So I'm a little surprised it didn't make it that long, but the ticket sales must have been been pretty bad then i'm guessing yeah meatloaf's an interesting character you know as far as he was so popular in a period of time but i don't know that his music has really retained the popularity or he became such a popular figure he was not as like i don't know visible in public in his later years so i just wonder if the average person doesn't know a ton about him or what this show is about um obviously i don't really know what the show is about other than it takes his you know his, his songs from that musical that he originally took the songs from in the 70s and you know it's a new version of it so even having read articles about it i have you can see i have a very confused thought about what it's all about and i just don't think that it's uh, so easy to resonate with audiences we need more unique shows we need we see awakening at win we saw you know a new cirque show at new york new york but we need like that next level of vegas show something unique something new that's not just rehashing broadway shows or Cirque shows. That's pers my personal opinion. Maybe Awakening is that. Maybe we'll see more of that. We need some of this cool tech, drone shows, 
You know, when I was on the Royal Caribbean Odyssey of the Seas earlier this year, they have a full theater show that has hundreds of drones and all kinds of technology. And to see that come to Vegas with a high budget, I think that would be a lot of fun. So I, I hope maybe we get some shows like that instead of, you know, theatrical shows. Yeah, Meatloaf needed the Stranger Things treatment that Kate Bush got. And then he, you know, all that music would have been on fire right now. There you go. There you go. All right. So the big news of the week is Fountain Blue. They announced that they secured $2.2 billion in financing from Chase and that they will be able to finish this thing by the end of 2023. It should open up in the fourth quarter of 2023. And uh, is this enough, Mark, to get you your skepticism under control? Yeah, I, I think it will open. It's just, you know, that they're taking that much money at the end to finish it off. Seems Doesn't that kind of scare you a little bit? Like, how are we almost to the end? You need another $2 billion. I don't know. That's kind of crazy. I'm assuming that's to take over whatever debt they've accumulated for the construction. So this will be an all-inclusive loan for everything they've spent. That's the way I sort of take it. But yeah, it would seem like $2.2 billion just to get through the next year of construction when they should be pretty far along would be strange. But it's it's a good investment in Las Vegas. We've seen all these land sales. We've seen high dollar amounts and now Chase coming in with a huge loan. This is very different than we saw in the downturn in 2008, 2009 when everybody pulled their funding and projects like City Center almost died and Fountain Blue itself, right? That's a That was a victim of that. So it's good to see kind of investment coming from Wall Street. I mean, this is going to be a 25 acre property, 3,700 hotel rooms, 550,000 square feet of convention space. And conventions are a big part of what they're doing. They have their convention website up trying to sell conventions. Obviously, it's located right next to the convention center. It looks really nice. We've talked about the renderings before. I think they nailed the design. Very modern, very chic. It's going to be a good kind of companion to Resorts World across the street. Maybe a, a little bit nicer from what it looks like in the renderings. We'll have to see how it comes out. But... Finally, this project, that building's been sitting there forever. This is that final bit of hope I think a lot of people needed to know. This is actually going to get done, and we're going to have another mega resort on the Strip pretty soon. Yeah, interesting, you know, going after convention business. I know it's right by the convention center, but how long will that take to kind of get back to where it was? Will it ever get back to the way it was? You know, are conventions kind of a thing of the olden times now? I think conventions will be back. I just don't know, you know, is it two, four, six years down the road when they get back to to full amount of people that were, were doing them before. And, you know, we've seen in the numbers on Vegas that they're, they're so much lower than they were before. So who knows? And there's so much conventions. I feel like there's, there's just tons of convention space, like Circa just finally finished theirs or, or resorts world. It's like, there's all this new convention space and they're already having trouble dealing with what they had before. So I don't know. Yeah. And it's interesting because before the pandemic, everybody was trying to build convention space. Aria a few years ago, famously took out their theater, where Zarkana was uh, in order to turn it into convention space. And that's been the trend, you know, before COVID. And so it'll be interesting how that turns out. One thing to note though, is during these huge conventions in the past, when the convention center is full, a lot of companies would use offsite places like the Venetian uh, with their Sands Convention Center, the Westgate, the Hilton that had convention center for, you know, for rooms they would rent to have meetings for other convention displays. And I think, that with Resorts World and uh, Fountain Blue, they're much closer. I think these are going to be the spaces that will be used. So this could also hurt maybe Venetian, some of the other properties that draw some of that business. Definitely going to be focusing on events as well. And those go along with the big conventions like CES, having the big parties, having those sorts of things and spaces for that. So that's where I think they're going. But yeah, you're right. I mean, conventions have not come back 100%. We do have a glut of convention space so it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Will it return to before the pandemic where there really wasn't enough convention space in Las Vegas, which is a crazy thing to say because there is so much convention space in Las Vegas. But with prices being high too, will companies also choose other cities for, for their conventions to have a cheaper experience? We don't know, but Fountain Blue betting on that. And I'm excited for this project. Looks great. And it looks like one of those hotels that I definitely want to stay in, maybe like the new version of Cosmo? Who knows? Ooh, bold words. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's going to do it for this week's show. Definitely let us know what you guys think about Fountain Blue. Are you excited for this? Do the renderings get you excited? Is this project going to get finished? I think it will. I don't really see why it wouldn't at this point. But uh, chime in below. Are you excited about that? Who's robbing all these casinos? Let us know. And uh, let me know about Prim. Uh, Prim Valley. What do you think about the hotel being closed? The mall? Is that area just sort of dead? And Buffalo Bills, if you saw that video, let me know what you think there. 
I'm really excited about what I saw. It's a lot of love and care talking to the manager there. It seems like that property is destined for better things while they're going to sacrifice the other property, which, you know, makes sense considering uh, the economic conditions out there. So let us know everything that you think about that stuff. We'll discuss it in the comments. If you like the channel, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, tell a friend about our videos. We do two a week, Tuesdays and Fridays, and we'll be back soon with another video. Thanks so much for watching and happy new year. Did you get a lowdown on when the coaster comes back? <laughs> Watch the video. <laughs> Bye. Bye.